Hello everybody, welcome to a real-time talk right here on Black Drum TV. This is that show where we talk about everything that affects us on a daily basis. As long as it's trending stories and everybody's talking about it, we will definitely talk about it right here on the show. My name is Chiwete and joining me today on the show is a very, very talented individual. I cannot wait for you to meet him. We'll meet him shortly, right after this break. Stay with us. Well, welcome back to the show. This is Real Time Talk right here on Black Drum TV. My name is Chiwete. Like I said before, words on that break, we'll be talking about different things that affect us on a daily basis, trending stories. Probably you've argued about this with your friends or family members. We will talk about it right here on the show. Joining me right now is an amazing artist. He is indeed a talented individual. He goes by the name LT. He's an artist. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing? bro? Okay. Do we chop knuckle? Do we shake hands? Yeah, Anyone? Both, we do, at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I mean, uh, tell us about yourself, right? LT. What, what does LT mean? Yeah, LT stands for my real name. Okay. Okay, like the original spelling of LT was L dot T. Okay. Which was derived from my original or my original name, Olu Taiwo. All right. Without the O. Mm -hmm. And then for management reasons, we uh, changed the spelling to LT, E, L, T, W, E. So mm. that's LT is actually my name, but just uh, is a combination of an ab ab abbreviation for my name. Okay, all right. So, so tell us about your music journey. When did you start? When did you decide to you know take this very seriously? Uh, I think uh, since I was seven, when I watched my uncle dance to Michael Jackson, in as much as he was doing it wrongly, but I still <laughs> loved it. Yeah. So do you dance too? Yeah, I dance. I dance professionally for over twelve years. Oh. Yeah, dance okay. and crump. That's my that's my major. So I was more like uh, I started as a dancer before I kicked up my career as, as a as a musician, and uh, it was just from when I was seven I decided I wanted to sing and dance. It, there wasn't there wasn't like I want to be a doctor or a lawyer. I saw Michael Jackson. I fell on Michael Jackson. I just decided I want something like this for myself, hmm. and that's how it has been for me since then. Though in as much as I started as a dancer. Uh, dance for a couple of artists back then. Okay. And all. You want to mention a few? Yeah, I did dance for P Square. I did. Oh, I did, really? I did That's dance huge. for um, Vector. I danced for Tua Savage and uh, Nigerian Idol. I danced for a couple of artists. I'm trying to remember. Even today, we will be a couple of them mm. to mention. And I was just doing mostly um, TV, few TVs and mostly shows. I was okay. doing a lot of shows. And afterwards, I just I, I, was, I was singing through this period, but then wasn't professionally. And then afterwards, I just said, okay, I want to go into music. Then my mom was like, when you're taking a level, I was like, okay. I dropped my first single in 2009. Oh, yeah. That, that's and a long time. Afterwards, I was like, okay, uh, when I'm my taking a level, I'll do this. But I didn't have it in mind. It just happened naturally. Mm -hmm. My taking a level, I dropped my song, CJJ, produced by Phil Keys. And we shot the video, and afterwards, it's just been... So, so, so do you fuse dance into your music right now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, go, man, you all should go and check out my music videos. You'd okay. see love dance in a couple of my music videos. Even my present video is like the sickest dance music video you'd see ever presently. What's the title? It's, it's titled Galala. Galala. Check it out. It's an, uh, okay. it's an, uh, a fusion of Afro with EDM. Hmm. So it's, uh, it's like listen to uh, a major laser infused with, uh, with dance all. Infused like it's like a major effort to infuse a dance or basically. Mm. So it's a dance video. But then I wanted to sell the culture of Afro urban. Okay. Yes, then and still maintain that uh, Western feel in the video. So mm. there's from the beginning of the video to the end of the video, it's okay. dance. Okay. Dance, dance. All right, let's get straight into what we're talking about today on the show. So uh early this week, of course, uh, news broke out that Twitter had launched their office, their African headquarters in not Nigeria, but in Ghana. Now, we understand that you might not agree with me, but there's a silent beef between Nigeria and Ghana when it comes to who's the giant of Africa, when it comes to our music. And I think it's because both countries interact with themselves a whole lot. And when this happened, a lot of people were like, whoa, this is huge for Ghana. Why Ghana? Why not Nigeria? What's your reaction to that? <laughs> I think the um, I think our government failed us. Mm. Yeah, that's the angle I'm gonna come from because uh, if you come from the whole uh, Nigeria when it comes to entertainment and all, 
it's you start you start it start being complicated, it start being sentimental. But let's think about it. Our government failures because if we actually have a system that's better, we would be more exposed to being online. Not like we're not exposed to being online, but you can't mm -hmm. compare how exposed Ghanaians are compared to Nigerians on Twitter, by the way, not online. Okay. On Twitter, by the way. So our country is actually big. It's bigger than Ghana, most deaf. Um, if you go and look at the reasons why they chose to pick Ghana, yeah. you'd, you'd find out that part of the reasons mm. you'd, you can see the fault in our system. No, no, no. Let me, let me, let me, let me quote you there. Let me tell, let me share with you part of the reasons, uh, you know, Ghana was picked uh, above every other African country. Now, one of them is the fact that they champion democracy, they're supporter of free speech, online freedom, and the open internet. Now, also, Ghana, uh, Ghana's is hosting the Secretariat of the African Continent Free Trade Area. So, I guess... Yeah. Everything you just listed is a combination of how the system is failing us. And if, uh, if we can better our system, it will actually show in, the, in, the, in, in, in Nigerians, in every individual in this country. Mm -hmm. Okay, the system actually betters you. And if the system is not bettering you, it's not going to better... Um, it's not going to. It's going gonna, it's gonna to better our our strength out there when it comes to bragging about things of, concerning Nigeria. For example, we go outside now. Bonobo is a giant of Africa presently. Okay, the first um, Nigerian artist to win a Grammy. Okay, and we don't have a system to back up. Uh, what's it called? This is a system to back up that right, that bragging right. A system that is that celebrates. It's basically we as Nigerians who would definitely celebrate him. He is representing Nigeria outside the country, mm. okay? And that system goes far. So I don't think there's anything wrong with um, Nigerians when it comes to entertainment as a whole. But then now, um, when, it, when it comes to all these um, corporate bodies, they look beyond just the advantage in the country. Mm. They look at what works for them. And if there's a security risk also for them, a lot of things are being considered before making that decision. I don't support the fact that they chose Ghana over Nigeria because Nigeria is way bigger than Ghana. No doubt about that. Okay. But I also see that the reason they stated as to why they chose, some people can call it sentimental, but I see that the reason they, they stated is a fact that can't be arguable because you can't see that in your own system. So I think it's legit, whatever, I read, that particular reason you read, I think it's legit. But at the same time, in order for us to battle something, or in order for us to fight, or in order for us to argue with something, we actually have to look at our system and see, can we, or do we have something to, that, that is above, that supersedes everything that's listed against us. Okay, so, so what's your take on Nigerians, especially how Nigerians have used social media in recent times? Nigerians are one of the... <laughs> If you want Nigerians to use social media, just um, come up with the bad news. Oh, um, really? Trust me, we are, we, are, we are used to bad news. And that's because our system, like I said initially, is, is part of what's causing us. It affects our mentality sometimes also. Okay? Um, of course, bad news sells for a lot of people outside, everywhere in the world. Okay, not just Nigerians. Yeah. But when you post something positive, not everybody will celebrate you. And think about it also. It goes deep, deep within our system. It has become a way of living. All right, all right, let's uh, move elsewhere now. Now, a certain a user on social media uh, came out to express himself as regards, uh, you know, what happened when he decided to take his wife to the gym. Now, he, this is what he wrote. He said, I wanted to register wifey at this gym inside Gowon Estate, cool. but I changed my mind when I noticed how the gym attendants were looking at her curves. Now, trust issues, yeah, 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 yeah. Carry your own go. Give, carry your own go give them. I ain't taking that chance, Biko. Thank you. My bro, now me hold the money in for registration, but you need to see how they were all over my wifey. Madam, you will do this one, do the other one. I will take you on this, blah, blah, blah. I'm waiting for them to finish, then jejeli carry my wife. Come out. I mean, if you take your wife to a gym, now this is just, I'm just, I'm just thinking aloud. If you take your wife to the gym, she has to be under someone in terms of instruction. It's just like going to take someone to school. True. There must be a teacher, there must be a lecturer to take you through school. So if you're going to take your wife to the gym, there has to be some sort of training, some sort of, to be honest, sometimes there will be some sort of body contact because mm. it's totally physical. I mean, what, can you, would, you, would you take your girlfriend to the gym? I, I, okay. 
Firstly, that's the thing I actually want to comment about. Okay. On, um, I don't see a reason why I'm taking my girlfriend to the gym, gym and then I'm sitting down to watch her gym. <laughs> okay. Like, duh. Like, seriously, I actually have other things I'm doing. Okay. So if my girlfriend wants to go to the gym, she wants me to drop her by the gym, I will drop her at the gym and then leave. Okay. So you really don't care what's happening there? No, no, no. It's not about what's happening there. She's going to gym. Okay. Now, my insecurities are going to be... We all have insecurities. Forget. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's no way my girlfriend will take me to the gym, for example, and then I'll be there and then there's a female trainer. And then she's like, you're going to actually... She's going to sit down on top of me and say, you're going to have to push the iron. And she's like, no, nah, no, nah, I can't do that. Everybody will say that. Okay? okay. So I think personally, I feel like if you want to watch your wife gym, you should go to a private gym where you don't have trainers. You, you should learn or you should actually Google some stuff that she can do on her own. If you don't want to give, you want to give yourself peace of mind. <laughs> yes, now you want to live long. Okay. Like, long. But um, it's, I think personally, it's, it's, his own, it's his own insecurity. Okay. Mm. And also, he's a man. Like I said, it's not girlfriend, it's his wife. Okay, he, he, if he can't handle it, then she look for a total different gym. But, but if you look at it, I mean, aside the lady going to the gym, there are other places she would go to where she would meet men who would equally he said, admire he said, her. He said they. He didn't say he. No, even if, look, let's be honest. If there are a set of men in a particular place, mm. four or five guys just in, mm. and a hot girl passes, the four guys will probably yeah, feast their we'll, eyes. We'll stare. Of course, we'll stare at her. So brother. exactly. So if even if it doesn't happen in the gym, if she goes to work, she probably has colleagues, male colleagues over there, okay. who will probably be you know looking at her, checking her out, checking out the curves and all that. So okay. I'm wondering. I think the difference between um, that example and what okay. he experienced. Not like I'm defending him, but what he experienced was that they literally are going to teach her everything she's going to do. Okay. So, in his mind, the fact that she's attractive and they look at her and then they concentrate on what they're doing and then there's probably one trainer saying, okay, I will teach her this. And then he understands that he has to restrict himself. Also, it also depends on the woman. The okay. woman wouldn't want her man to feel um, insecure. And any man who really loves a man would not want a man to see that this person come too close at all. In as much okay. as the, the uh, instructor actually have to be professional. Mm -hmm. But still, she's going to consider that. Okay, and then sometimes it's not more that you consider that because he won't be able to do his job properly, and some of the training might require physical contact. Doesn't mean that the man is interested. But then, as a man, mm -hmm. you now you carry your babe go gym now. You say, okay, oh, babe, ah, uh, so I'll be like, what the? And then you've, you've noticed everybody looking at the guy like, uh, and then he's like, yeah, bend down, and he's bend down, he's at the back. What, you, what are you going to think about? The best thing there is that you either walk away as a man okay. to say, okay, she's, they're doing their job, or it's, you might start to feel insecure. Because if it was you also, she would feel the same way. So I don't want us to rule out how the man is feeling. Okay. Okay. But I also feel like if you know you want to gym or you know you want to follow your wife to your gym, you shouldn't take her to, especially when she's very attractive, attractive mm. you should either respect the, the instructors that are there and then leave to give yourself... Some peace Long of mind. Life peace of I mean, mind. so, so what, what's your take on even the fact that because I think there's a lot of pressure on people, you know, to have the perfect body. Some call it the summer body and all of that. Mm. Not mm. only even women now, even men also have that pressure, you know, to want to go to the gym, to want to work out, to want to have that, you know, that perfect body shape. What, what, what's your take on that? I don't think it's about perfect body sometimes. I think it's about being healthy. Okay. Okay. Um, Ninety-nine percent of all of us are not healthy. Let's, let's, let's be, be honest. It's not about gym now. It's about what we eat. Okay. Okay. But uh, I feel like your confidence is based off on how comfortable you are in your own flesh. Okay. Okay. And if, you, if you're not comfortable enough in the way you are, you change it. That's what a lot of people do. They want some people. Mm. It's, not, it's not like they're not confident. They just feel like, okay, I feel like adding a little. I feel like losing a little. Now, for people that are very, very big, sometimes a lot of things actually stop them and constrain them from losing weight and some from, from adding weight. Okay. Like there are a bunch of things. But I feel like everybody should be confident in their body. And if you're not confident enough, you feel like you need to do something about it, then do something about it. Okay, well, if you just join us, it's a real time talk right here on Black Drum TV. And I'm having a discussion with LT. He's a musician, an artist. A talented one at that. And uh, at this point, to go on a quick break, when we come back, there's more to talk about. Stay with us. 
All right, welcome back to the show. This is Real Time Talk right here on Black Drum TV. My name is Chiwete, and uh, here with me is LT. We have been talking about different issues, and it's time to move to another one. So, uh, Dr. Dikbo Awujide uh, on, on social media, it's at Ogbeni Dikbo, uh, wrote this on social media. He says, 90 minutes wasted watching football when you could invest that time in your life by taking IELTS or looking for a better job on LinkedIn. I honestly don't know what is wrong with this generation. I need to ask first of all, are you a football fan? I don't watch football that much. That much, but you know how crazy people are about yes, football. Yes, I know. Do you think it's extreme? That's like a very, this topic is very, 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 very large. Okay. But I'll just say my take. Okay. I don't think having a sport that is being recognized in the entire world and it, it, it becoming one of the, the largest um, interested sports in the world, mm. I don't think it's extreme. Okay. Because if you're talking about extreme, there's ex everybody... Yeah, because we know, I mean, the, the love for football is crazy. Let's not even, let's not yes, take that. Especially in this part of the world. I've, we've seen people fight people, get violent because of football. We've seen people not eat their wife's food because their team lost. They will deny their wife sex because their team lost. You know, people start to act as though football do you, is. Do you deny their wife sex because their team lost? Some people, yes. I know someone who you know because he's in a. If you're in a good bad mood, how would if she touches you, you would just if be like. Put him back I beg, in a good mood. Is she is she, is she mind you? Unless money is involved. <laughs> but, no, but some but some men, you know, the moment their team lose, okay. they are they are you know their countenance everything changes. They just go to bed and sleep. They probably oh, won't even eat that day. Wow. So it's that crazy for some people. So wow. Don't you think that's extreme? Okay, uh, I think it's just we're, we're, we're all different. Okay, okay, like for, for some people, you do know that in this world, there are some people that will, would hope to see Jamie Foxx or Justin Bieber in a show. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, if they go for the show and they don't see Justin, Justin Bieber, the, the, same, the same people will not feel like talking to their boyfriend mm -hmm. or their brother. Okay, okay, it's, it also applies to basketball, also. Okay, I think it's a bit much, but then it's their own. I don't know. It's it's their mentality. Okay, they they their life has merged to that that sport or mm. that their, their interest in that person has become a lifestyle to them. That when it's um, when they don't get to see what they're promised or what they're hoping for, it does affect them. At the end of the day, personally, okay. Uh, I don't think me personally it will affect me. It's not okay, so what, what is that thing that can happen to you? Of course, aside maybe losing someone or, you know, maybe losing a deal or something. But what is that thing that can make you not eat and not do the things you love to do? I barely eat. Okay. So what do you, what do you, what do you love to do aside making music? I love writing. I love okay. playing games. Like video games? Yes, video games. Okay. So what is that thing that will make you not do any of this? Nothing. Nothing. The only thing that can <clears throat> cause it is if I lose someone. Okay. okay, like when I lost my mom, it was a problem for me for a while. It affected me. Here. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, my twin brother actually had an incident a couple of uh, a while ago. Same thing. My family uh, is very very dear to me. Like uh, I love them so much. So if you want to get to me, you, that's the only means you can use to get to me. But aside that, only if I have a show and it was cancelled, and then I was expecting so much from it. Like, for example, last year there was a show we supposed to do in Abuja with this okay. kid, and then it was cancelled, and we had to refund like that. It hurt my soul, but I will still eat. <laughs> 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 I will still eat. It, it, that's, what I, that's what I'm saying. Um, no matter okay. what it is, mm. I believe that I will not suffer myself because I need to still remain healthy for the same people. Mm. Okay? So, like I said, it's personal. This, this thing, this joy, my swimmer is a Chelsea fan. But if Chelsea lose today, we see it. If my brother drops one millionaire right now mm. to um, bet on a game, for example, yes. uh -huh, I know that I understand how it feels because if I, no matter what it is I'm betting on, if I put one millionaire as a bet or I lose that kind of um, amount, of, of, amount money. of money, there's no human being that will feel like eating. But have you noticed that another reason why I sometimes I don't, I don't have appetite is when I actually see credit a lot? Look, you see, there's something about credit a lot. It's very therapeutic, I must say. Yes. No matter how sick you are, if you cannot move your body, the moment you receive credit alert, it's healing. There's something about it. The joy. You know. Sometimes, especially when the credit alert is like maybe like six figures. You know. Eight figures. 
Just yeah. sit down and like, and say, you go chow. No, I'm not eating. You know, you feel very proud <laughs> for no so, reason. So th I think those are the two things. Maybe okay. money is involved mm -hmm. and, oh, if I lose someone, okay, that's just it. Aside from that, uh, no. I mean, you've mentioned, uh, you know, betting now. Some people, you know, they, they use all the, they get addicted to these things when it yes, comes to even yes. betting and sometimes they lose almost everything. What, what's your take on betting? It's personal. Okay. I would, uh, okay. The, like I said, the interest, that would, what would cost me to bet? Now, I think it's excess because it's affecting our kids now. Okay. Uh, a lot of kids these days would rather use their money to bet than save it to do something better for themselves, mm -hmm. even adults, not just kids. Okay. So I think that betting is not bad. There's nothing wrong in betting if, it's gonna, if you're going to gain from it. But the excess... Excessiveness in betting, you betting excessively, okay. you betting your entire savings and then going to borrow money to bet. I think that, that's, that's too much. Yeah. All right, let's move elsewhere now. So uh, we're going to show you something on the screen right now. Yeah, it has to do uh, with someone who uh, put up a post. Now, he wrote to normalize going on a date with your friends. That's what the guy put out. Now, look at the picture. Look at the sleet on that girl's dress. It's amazing. That is a friend. He's talking about. I mean, first off, what's, what, do you, what do you think about having the opposite sex as just a friend? Do you think it's something that can be sustainable? Yes. And you guys are actually just friends. Nothing is happening. Yes, I, I believe so. You believe My so? My best friend is a girl. Okay, so how, how is your... And we've been, we've been besties for over 12 years. 12 years, amazing. Yes. You've had girlfriends between those periods. Yes. And what, did, how, how was, what was the relationship like between your girlfriend and your best friend? They're very close. They relate a lot. Okay, my girlfriend was, was the one that back then, she was the one that was very protective and all that she knew. You know a woman, now when she said that woman, like besties, 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 guy okay. and girl besties. Mm -hmm. But then she then tend to see that, okay, given um, the scenery that she has met uh, or the um, vibe between these two people, they don't have a vibe of someone who has had that kind of history, that kind of sexual history. Okay. Okay, so then she starts to build trust. Okay, so I think a guy and a girl can become best friends depending on how they feel. Okay, and it depends on the personalities of both of them also and how, what they think about each other and how they feel about each other. Okay, if a guy and a girl are best, a guy and a girl can also be besties and sleep with each other. It does not stop them from being besties. Just in case some people think it's wrong, you can be besties with each other as long as the two of you are not emotionally attached to each other. Okay. How, 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 how easy is that, though? I mean, you guys are best of friends, and you guys have sex and no emotions. Really? There's usually emotions at the end of the day. One person will feel something, obviously. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so, so would you allow your girlfriend to have... Would you be okay if, you're, if your girlfriend's best friend is a guy? He's a guy. Oh, he's a guy? Yeah. Okay, you're cool with him? With that, you're cool uh, with that arrangement? Well, okay, I, think, I think I need to rephrase. He was a guy. Oh, he was a guy. Okay. Okay, and I think they're still cool, the two of them. I don't think, like I said, it's how you place yourself in front of someone, okay? And at the end, she and the guy, I don't know how long now, but they've been besties for over seven years. Oh, wow. No sexual relationship. I think I, I, I met myself back then in that situation, okay? And I don't think there's anything wrong in it if you guys actually can build trust in each other. But then, when a guy and a girl come together and say, oh, they actually want to have this, um, what, this barricade between two of them saying, mm -hmm. okay, we can only open or access each other in this manner okay. when we want something sexual. Aside from that, that's the barricade. No emotions attached at all. It always ends as a disaster. But here's the thing for me. I mean, if you say you guys are best friends, now best friends is not just a label, right? Best friends has to do with things that have happened to both of us. So... Most times, your best friend is someone that knows everything about everything. you. Everything. So, and that's where emotions come from. When the person knows, oh, this is your ability, this is what you can do, and all that. So, if you, if you guys are best of friends and you guys are open to each other, okay. because like an open book thing, okay. if you guys know everything about yourselves and sex is involved, I think it could just start to trigger something, you know, that would lead to one person catching feelings and all that. And most times, once one person starts to catch feelings... Mm -hmm. There's always... It's always a disaster. It's always a disaster, yeah. Yes. There's always, always a problem. 
at the end of the day. Exactly, so, complicates things. So, so, so would you say that, uh, you know, the concept of friends with benefits or, you know, let's just be having fun, do you think that whole concept should not really, really be encouraged? <laughs> FWB. <laughs> yeah. Wahala. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you've been in one, you've, you've, you've been involved in something like that yeah, before. Yeah. If not I, presently. No, no, no. Are you sure? No. Are you sure about that? No, no, no. I'm above that right now. <laughs> You're above that. Yeah. Is there really an age age bracket for yes. that? No I, I, no, I don't think there's an age bracket for it. Okay. I just think there's a mindset bracket for it. A oh, mindset bracket. Yeah. Okay. So you just, okay, I've done this, done that. I think I'm above that. I can't be doing the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it depends on the age you realize that. So it's a mindset. Okay. Uh, a guy and a girl having become friends with benefits is... You see, friends with benefits, we don't understand it here in this country. Mm. Okay? If you want to be my friend, not people term, term friends with benefits as besties with benefits. Mm. You understand? They feel like, ah, I can tell you everything, and then we can still have sex. Okay. Now, no, friends with benefits means that when I see you, when you see me, all that concerns us is sex. When we're talking, we don't have, I can't talk to you about my personal life. You can't talk to me about your personal life. What we do is sex, good sex, chat. Okay, all right, just, yeah. before, just before we wrap things up on the show today, let's talk about domestic violence. I mean, almost every now and then we open, if you go on social media, is one person beating up somebody, someone's wife, sorry, someone's husband, most times. I know it happens to some men sometimes, but most times you see a man beating up his wife, a boyfriend beating up his girlfriend, you know, mm -hmm. domestic violence. Some women, have, I know, say they like drama in their relationship. Some go back to <laughs> settle. <laughs> No, some will say it's actually, I'm not even joking. Some will tell you, I love it. I love the makeup sex, you know, after the whole drama and everything. So, I, yeah, yeah. So there are people like that. So, some people have said, if it's marriage, it's for better or worse, you know. Okay. So, even if he's beating you, remain in the marriage, remain in the relationship and all of that. What, what is your take on domestic violence, especially among lovers or spouse? It's wrong, point blank. Whether is that a deal breaker for you? Should someone leave ah, no, no, end no, no. the relationship because don't, of that? Don't touch you. You cannot beat me, by the way. No, no, no woman <laughs> Are you can sure? beat me. Are you sure about that? You, you, never, you never jam. <laughs> <laughs> but then, I think it's a deal breaker. No, I don't think it's a deal breaker for me because you can't, don't you touch a woman. You beat a woman because why? Who are you? It's wrong. It's annoying. It's, uh, ah... I can't, I can't put the kind of words I feel when I'm enraged, okay? Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't place the exact words to use when I say man beat a woman. Just don't even lay your hands on a woman. You have the choice to walk away. There are some women that are bad for you, but you always have the choice to walk away. I, I agree with you with walking away, but here's the thing. Sometimes I feel some women back. can be, yes, either they pull you back, lock the door, put the key in some place, you know, and say, you're not going anywhere. Some women are stronger than men. Some, than some men. Well, a lot of men are stronger than women, mostly. Okay. For any man, and I'll say it right here, any man who touches or lays hand on his wife, saying he's disciplined enough or whatever, is an insecure man. He's, uh, I don't want to use, I don't want to be abusive, but then mm. he's not a man. If you think beating your woman makes you a man, then you're not a man. Real men walk away. Women can condone and hold themselves. You know, do you know the kind of patience, the kind of strength it is to hold yourself when you are really enraged and then walk away? It takes someone who is mature enough to do that, to look at how bad the situation is. And it doesn't just apply to women, even when you're angry and you know you could kill that person or you could beat that person in that mm -hmm. instant. You understand? It takes everything, strength within you to just walk out of that situation. Real men do that. Now, for it being a guy against guy, regardless of how small the person is or how big the person is, and you know you can actually beat the person or you can actually do things that you would, never, you would not do on a, norm, on a, on a normal day, mm. it's understandable, it being a guy to a guy. But a man to a woman, you shouldn't touch a woman. You shouldn't lay your hands on a woman. It's, I will arrest you. Hey, I don't care. I don't care if it's my business or not. I don't think you should ever touch a woman and say, I'm disciplining her. For what? 
What if it's for another reason? Even if, see, there's some women that actually want you to do them. Do you know that? You know how crazy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some women will tell you, they want to test husband, your anger and yeah, see. Yeah, my husband slap, slaps me. And I, and I don't say, nah, man. Nah, man. You understand? Mm -hmm. and, and that's wrong. And if you go and find out, women that actually have a mentality like that, it's actually a mentality that they've, that they've either learned from somewhere well, while growing up, seen somewhere, or has been taught to them. Okay? Because we all grew up differently. Okay? But then, any man that lays under a woman, no man, I ah, forget that. But let's not even long the matter on this one because. <laughs> It's even annoying me, sir. Okay. If you be a woman, like beat Of course, you. no, no, it's wrong. It's wrong because you shouldn't it's, try. Ah, me and you enter the same basket. You don't try. Yeah. All right, I must say thank you so much, LT, for coming through thank today on me. the show. Now, for those who want to catch up with you on social media, what's your handle? Yeah, uh, you guys can follow me on all my social media um, platforms on IG, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, at the main LT. That's T H E M M A I N E L T W E. T H E M A I N E L T W E. At the main LT on social media platform. Oh, and then on TikTok for you guys that are like to see me have fun, LT skills. Okay. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Okay. All right. You can follow me, of course, on Twitter at Chiwete Oyema. Thank you so much for being there and sticking with us up until now. We're done with Real Time Talk. So I'll see you again next time. Stay fly. Thank you.